Okay. All right, folks. Uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, I believe that Carrie won't be joining us, so I will jump in straight. But unless, uh, Charlotte, would you like to spend a minute or two introducing uh, Vitality? I think you didn't know introduction, but uh, just in case some of the folks who haven't uh, had a chance to uh, work with you. Well, yes, uh, we're a voice over IP provider who has been in business for over 10 years, and we are always looking for new and exciting products and exciting to offer products. to our team and our customers. So uh, that's where you come in with your new product uh, from Matrix and the, the capabilities of that. And we're excited to learn more about that on this webinar today with you. All right. Well, thank you uh, so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to join you, you and uh, uh, obviously uh, to your reseller community. Uh, thank you for attending this meeting. Uh, just to give you uh, a brief introduction, I'll try to keep, keep this uh, as uh, fast moving and uh, breezy as possible. Now, uh, Paul is saying that uh, volume is too low. Are you able to hear okay now? All right, perfect. Okay, uh, and uh, we'll try to get uh, as many uh, slides as possible without giving you a lot of uh, you know nuts and bolts type of uh, details, but more like a an overview of our product line. And uh, as we get opportunity, uh, you know, you will have uh, my contact information also available. So if you need some more uh, questions answered. Uh, that regarding our gateway configuration, I have put together some slides and I'm hoping that we get to those as well to show you how easy it is to configure our gateway using Vitality SIP trunking. Uh, as far as the sales tool, I'm going to kind of put the cart before the horse a little bit. We have multiple sales tools available. Uh, obviously, we have a configuration guide that we have created using specifically for Vitality SIP trunk. Our products are in the lab and they are uh, Vitality Lab, and they've been well tested uh, and certified, so you have this peace of mind of you know, really going in interoperable solution, both from a SIP trunk as well as the hardware. So with that, let's get started. Warm welcome again. Uh, brief uh, introduction to Matrix. We've been in the business since the 91. Uh, we, are tele we started as a telecom CPE manufacturer, and now uh, we have expanded upon other things, uh, our, our claim to fame. It's still gateways where we can switch any to any trunk from our platforms. So whether it's a SIP, PRI, GSM, obviously PSTN, FXO, FXS, even BRI, uh, as well as some old tie lines, we have been able to convert them into either a voice or IP or even GSM. End of. Uh, we also manufacture products uh, in uh, IPPBX, uh, IP-based access control and time and attendance and surveillance products. Today, we're focusing on gateways, specifically two of the gateways. One of them uh, is a, from a SIP to analog to and from, and the other one is SIP to digital, T1, E1, PRI type of gateways. Uh, coming back uh, to my introduction, we have presence in about 45 countries, uh, more than 420,000. I, mean, I guess that, that number is always going to be changing, and you want it to be, obviously, keep changing, right? Uh, but after 75 countries. And we are primarily distribution approach only. We don't sell anything direct. Our claim, obviously, and our, our, our uh, distinction from other uh, vendors, obviously, is our free technical support as well as the support by appointment feature that is free to you. That means you can 72 hours uh, give us notice, hey, we are going to be installing your gateway using Vitality SIP trunk. And we will have a dedicated support engineer slotted for you for, during for that time. And that engineer will stay throughout the installation. Obviously, there, we will have to make sure that both sides, we have done all the preliminary stuff uh, prior to it so that uh, we can use our time uh, in the best way possible. But that's something that nobody else offers. Uh, the parts also, obviously, products come with a two-year warranty. And we guarantee of up to five years from the date of purchase on any parts or repairs that you need. Gateways are Nowadays, it's not necessary, but still, uh, we, uh, we like to make sure that we uh, put that out there. Uh, industry accolades or products have been recognized by you know, 
very myriad of avenues that we present our products to trade shows, conferences across the world. Uh, IT Expo is well known in this part of the world, but we also have, a, like I said, our access control products and our ATAs and our gateways been recognized all over the world. Enough of that shameless plug. Uh, next, well, gateways. We typically manufacture two types of gateways. One, the fixed port gateways. So the fixed configuration. That means you can you have to tell us by look. Here are the four port gateways, or eight port gateways, or sixteen port gateways, and that's what the configuration comes in. And the other side is what you call a scalable gateway, where there's there's a chassis, and then you can say, well, today I need only eight port, so we need a SIP trunk to perhaps maybe a 32 port FXS gateway, but I want to have this freedom or flexibility of able to change the configuration later on, meaning, uh, you know, I may add FXO lines to it, so I may need a slot open for FXO cards, or I may have uh, more FXS ports coming. So that's, those are the called the uh, scalable gateways. We're gonna focus our presentation on SETU. SETU uh, is the fixed product line, Eternity is the scalable configuration. All of our gateways support these multiple different interfaces and seamless call handling between multiple networks. Uh, we are taking a great deal of care to make sure our products are compatible with all sorts of PBXs that are out there, IP PBXs, legacy PBXs, and we keep testing because obviously there are so many of them out there that we continually test against them. And uh, and we we are we are very thankful to our system integrator partners who work with us to get the product something that we haven't tested or some software version that we haven't tested, we would go ahead and do that and make sure that everything is working before we leave you. Uh, we believe in that satisfaction and, and satisfactory handoff uh, uh, very much so. Anyways, uh, our gateways are very easy to implement and I'll show you, uh, I'm hoping and I'm gonna speed up a little bit so that I can get to those last few slides and make sure that I can show you what the configurations are like and how easy it is to configure using this Vitality SIP trunk. The next target customers we already know, but just uh, quickly, corporate offices, organizations with the field soft, uh, the remote project sites, call centers, anywhere the SIP trunk is being used, obviously. The SETU configuration. Now, SETU, there's a little history behind it. Uh, we know we tend to, uh, marketing folks get to name products with some deep meaning behind it, and engineering folks get to name the model numbers with some engineering meaning behind it, and you will get to see the both. From marketing side, Setu is a Sanskrit uh, Sanskrit word, a very ancient language. Uh, we are, if you didn't know, the company is originated from India. Uh, we still have our manufacturing staff. Our One of our headquarters is in India. Um, we have a staff of about 500 plus engineers uh, that uh, we staff in uh, India as well. And everything that you will see is designed, developed, manufactured, and supported by Matrix. So you are talking to the source in that regards. Uh, the setu, and the word setu in Sanskrit means bridge, bridging two different networks. Uh, and that's why we call this the uh, uh, setu line of series. All right, so next, uh, the products, uh, these are the SIP to FXO and FXS to and from. There are two different product lines, FVFX and VFXTH. The primary difference between the two that you will see is the VFX only has a pass-through FXO port, meaning a failover, while VFXTH has actually distinguishable FXO and FXO port and multiple configurations. Now, VFX, it's a multi-port uh, SIP to FXO FXS gateway. The FXO port will remain one, at one only as a failover and FXS ports configurations are from four to eight. Okay. Uh, and as we all know, this is the link to net, obviously SIP uh, connectivity to any traditional telephony and vice versa. It can be integrated with PBXs or even uh, used as a, on, a, on a GSM uh, FCT as a failover for cellular uh, connectivity. And Elements needs to upgrade any existing PC uh, or uh, PBXs to IP calls. Basically gets them all legacy IP, uh, PBXs IP enabled or SIP enabled. The interfaces, 
uh, you have a LAN and a WAN port, obviously, and then there's a Lifeline FXO port, and then you have the banks of FXS ports, and it's a 12 volt DC power jack. Now, the different types of variants, as you will see. So, FXS ports are, sorry, I'm just closing a couple of things that just popped up on my screen, uh, set to VFX 880. So, how do you distinguish what port configurations there are? So, this is where the engineers get to name the product, right? Uh, or the model number. So, V is always stands for voice over IP. FX or FXTH is basically uh, indicates presence of FXO or FXS ports. The numbers following that tells you how many SIP channels, how many uh, analog ports are available. So VFX8 means it's got eight SIP channels, it's got eight FXO ports and zero FXS ports. So same way the down below, VFX808, it's got still, still got eight SIP channels because remember adding FXS or FXO plus FXS ports gives you the total number of SIP channels available on a particular model. So there, there is no FX support, only failover, and you have eight FXS ports. The next model down, 404, obviously that follows the same logic, four SIP channels, four FXS ports, and zero FXO ports, and a, and a 440 to, uh, as a 4FXO variant. The next part, uh, next product line is VFXTH. Again, V stands for voice over IP or SIP, and FXTH means FXO and FXS ports. Again, these variants, we have about 10 different variants of those, this particular product line. And you will see that it can do from anywhere from eight up to 32 FXO or FXS port. Again, seamless connectivity between SIP and PSTN, and it's a gateway to interface IPVX or even a legacy PVX to SIP or TDM lines. So interfaces, Again, here's where you see uh, the FXO and FXS ports, and here's your uh, LAN port. The USB actually is for future use. We are, we are working on a few things uh, that will come down next year, uh, but right now the USB port is there, but it's not the one that is uh, used for anything else. The, here's your Ethernet port. This is where your uh, tr uh, SIP trunk will come in, and this is where your analog ports will be. So variants. Uh, so if you have a need for whether you need both FXO and FXS ports, multiple FXO and FXS ports, then this is the these are the variants you have available to you. VFXTH0808. So again, it's total number of channel, SIP channel 16 because you're adding an uh, easy way to remember that. That's what the number of channel, SIP channels are. And it's got a 08. The first two digits are for the FXO ports and the last two digits for FXS ports. So you can see that uh, on the screen, 8FXO and 8FXS. Sure, so there's the one question, the, what is the FXS port and what is the FXO port? You know, it, what I, the easiest way to remember is when you are dealing with a telephone company, you're talking about FXO ports. So from the CO is FXO and to the station is FXS. So I hope that, uh, that makes it uh, clear. Uh, and there's also a question about uh, if you'll get a copy of this deck. Of course you will, but I will not tell you when or how or or what will you need to do to get this until the end of the presentation. I'm just kidding. Char level uh, will be able to help us with that. All right. So you see, you are, I'm 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 sh hoping that uh, everybody's clear on number of FXO channels and FXS channels uh, on when it comes to VFXTH, and these are the variants for FXO and FXS ports. And Charla has quickly said that this is being recorded, uh, will be immortalized in a, on a Vitality website, and this link will be available after the call. I hope it goes viral on YouTube. All right, so next option. What if you just need FXO ports? There are instances that you need a more trunk, uh, deal with uh, trunk lines coming in from the phone uh, company, and or you can even uh, need a, to give that uh, from your uh, TDM PBX, you know, basically the FX S port of the any legacy PBX become it can be connected to the FX O port of the VFX TH to give that a trunk. So you have definitely uh, four different variants available. You have VFX, 
and VFX uh, 440 and 880 as we talked about it. And then on the VFX TH side, you have uh, two models. So VFX uh, TH 1600 and 3200. Again, the first two digits, that number tells you number of FXO ports. And the last two digits tell you number of FXS ports. So when you have zero, that means this thing, this products don't have uh, FXS port. All right. Next uh, product uh, is the FXS port. If you just need FXS port, you're connecting. By the way, all these products you're registering to an IPPBX are able to register to IPPBX via SIP trunking, right? Because all of them have SIP trunks available. Uh, and you have uh, five different variants, ranging from a four port all the way to 32 ports. Now you will have, uh, I'm, I'll, I will stop belaboring that point on a channel, so a number of channels, so I'll move to the next slide. So you can always call me if you need, need more clarification on that. So what is applications? So one of the things, I'm sure we are familiar with applications, but those of you who are just kind of tipping their toes uh, in this uh, new exciting world of SIP and analog connectivity together, uh, I am putting the VFX and VFX-TH both as in the same slide because they can both be used in these applications. So it's to access PSTN or analog trunk from voice over IP infrastructure and vice versa. What happens also, that you can maintain the existing dialing habits. So the customers who have certain analog phones and they want to deal with only that, don't want to manage or uh, worry about IP phones, uh, maybe too uh, cost prohibitive, or maybe just, uh, you know, they don't want to change the dialing habits. Well, this is where you definitely want to use that. You can, it's deployable with any SIP-based in infrastructure. It could be used for an analog port expander. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you might have uh, IPPBXs uh, sometimes do give you uh, analog ports, but they are not in, uh, the number of analog ports are not enough. So what do you do? There's an option to buy an expansion card from the manufacturer, which generally gets pretty expensive, or buy this inexpensive uh, piece of hardware while you're getting your SIP trunk from Vitality, and you can have now analog port expander that as well as a SIP trunk, and then you know for sure that both of these work together. So the next application is a standalone application. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, hey, you have a SIP trunk coming in and it's a basic office. There's no voice smell needed. There's nothing else you only need is a, a SIP trunk coming into a piece of hardware connecting a bunch of analog lines. That's all it is. And that's what these products can give you, both of them. The third application, Sure. Uh, you know, Oscar has a question. Please, please go ahead and type it, and I'll get to it as soon as uh, I, get, I get a chance. Uh, the next one is a gateway for legacy PBX. We talked about that. That customer has a PBX that's working just fine. They don't want to mess with it right now. But they say, you know what, Mr. System Integrator, why wouldn't you get me off those expensive analog trunks, if you could, please? And uh, this is the way to keep the PBX just the way it is, putting this piece of hardware in front of it, and then getting a SIP trunk from Vitality, connecting the FXS or FXO ports of the uh, gateway to appropriate ports of the PB PBX. Remember, FXS port of the gateway will go to the FXO port of the PBX, and FXO port of the gateway will go to FXS port of the PBX. Just, uh, again, this will change depending on your installation, but this is generally the rule. Now you are you have two things. You have a customer who's happy because they don't have to pay these analog trunk charges. They are onto very economical and a very reliable SIP trunk from Vitality, as well as you have a captured customer. Because once the customer is ready to move to IPPBX, and they will, because eventually this analog, they will gonna outgrow their needs of this analog PBX. And you have that customer also that you can sell an IPPBX to. Now, the question was, that do, do these have a version of Amphenol connectors? These fixed gateways, we do not. We are working on a version that will be available for the scalable side of things. But for now, it is just the RJ40, uh, RJ11 connections on, on the ports, uh, analog ports, and RJ45 on the SIP side. So next is a peer-to-peer. -peer. So there's also a possibility where you have two remote uh, locations connected. Again, the needs are not that we, where you need to put a uh, full-fledged IPPBX. 
you could actually connect both of these using just these gateways because they have these are a switch just like a pbx is a switch gateway is a switch and you could make connections and also now two offices are connected via sip and there's no uh, there's no toll charges on that okay so next uh again this is peer to peer application same thing using a two tdm or analog um pb axis and now you're connecting uh, uh using two set to vfx th gateways and a vitality strip trunk uh the, these gateways do provide qos and bandwidth management multi-site connectivity is to um Basically, have a two different, uh, multiple different offices using multiple different these gateways, and uh, basically a rehashing of a couple of four. Now look at it this way: now you can use it using this. All right. Uh, please, uh, I hope uh, my audio is still okay because I seem to be breaking up. Better now? Okay, perfect. All right, this is the same concept, uh, multi-site connectivity, and um, this is using a VFX TH. So the next, uh, this is a basically a very quick 10,000 feet overview of uh, VFX and VFX TH. I hope I'm answering the questions uh, appropriately as, as they're going along. Uh, if you are, not aware you can actually type in your questions in chat and I will try to get to them as I'm talking more and more about it and I'm hoping that also we get some uh, we'll get a chance to a um, little bit uh, go into the slides I have put together like a quick 10 11 steps slides on how to configure a gateway I mean it's not going to meet everyone's uh, uh, installation particular scenarios but it will give you a generic idea on how easy it is to do, do so all right, so next product, again, is a set to variant, and this product we want to talk about is VTAP. Um, again, set to is a marketing name. The engineering model is the VTAP. V is for voice over IP. T is for T1. E is for E1. P is for PRI. So you kind of get the idea. You know, I guess step would have been the better name sip t1 e1 pri but you know hey i i didn't get a chance i am not on a vitality sip trunk right now i was somebody they asked a question so no i'm not i'm actually sitting on a on our own network um and uh but we we do have vitality sip trunks in our labs and uh all the gateways uh and every reason <laughs> is kind of connected. It's uh, any any meetings line, <laughs> by the way, because Scott is. Uh, uh, thank you, Scott. Maybe they will sell those uh, a vitality sip trunk to any meeting, folks. All right, so let's get to this uh, VTAP. Um, again, this is a very exciting product for us because, and we, it's a very well received product. Uh, obviously, for for reasons that T, it can do T1, E1, PRI, and SIP all out of a single box. And uh, once once you see the specials that the Vitality has put together, you're gonna make uh, love it even more. Uh, so this is a dedicated uh, SIP to ISDN well uh, PRI gateway. It's a plug and play device. One of the things that you will see is uh, provides obviously PRI trunking for IPTVX. Uh, one of the interfaces that you will see, this has a network clock synchronization. So sync in and sync out. So, and basically what happens with that is that providing this, these ports, the clock synchronization with the PRI establishes so that there is nothing that needs to be done, framing changes and things of that nature on a PBX site, which is a relief for a lot of system integrators, because once you start playing with that, you never know what's going to happen. And then, you know, work may increase. So we kind of take that out of the equation a little bit. And then, you know, either you in a TE or NT mode. So that's the one thing you can easily, easily do either on a terminal side or on a network side. So if you're connecting to an ISDN uh, PBX, you can, you can decide 
which way it is. Whatever the PBX is, you choose the opposite on a gateway. Then you have a WAN port. Again, the USB port is for uh, future uh, usage. And you, then you the DC power jack here. These all gateways, by the way, are uh, rack mountable. So, you know, it's, you can do it in a 19-inch rack. Uh, some of them we also sell trays with, but it's a 1U, and you can easily, it's, it fits on any, any off-the-shelf for COTS hardware, if you call it, commercially available off-the-shelf hardware, uh, racking mount har uh, hardware you can use on these gateways. Uh, voice or IP connectivity. Now we said 32 channels uh, because obviously with the E1 and in, in US we won't use that, so it's, it's because it will be a 23 channel uh, SIP channel connection. Uh, so same way with the 32 SIP accounts, you can still do that. Uh, voice or IP proxy calls. The you know it can do a PRI connectivity, peer to peer call. There's up to 500 entries digest you can create. And as I mentioned, it's programmable terminal or network side. And it's uh, software con con configurable. Either you can do T1 or E1 PRI. Uh, footprint obviously looks small and it is. It's very compact uh, footprint, um, various different mounting options. Now, say, is this a PBX itself? I wouldn't call it. This particular product, the PBX itself, the VFX and VFX TH, you could make a case for that because they are switches. And this one and the PRI a PBX, I think they have a little more to, to it than just this. This is a particularly a gateway, I would call. But you can easily say that about VFX and VFX TH. They are basically PBXs that can do uh, SIP and analog. It just don't have the voicemail capabilities, that's all. So next, next uh, we talked uh, a little bit about network synchronization. So this dedicated sync in and sync out port basically has a common, provides a common clock source between the PBX and a, and a gateway. So the interoperability issues are removed. There's no clock slip. That means there are no drop calls. The administrative and configure, I mean, obviously, you know, I won't say that they are not easy to configure. Of course, they are easy to configure. And then you will see uh, that they are easy to configure. Uh, as a no high level expertise needed, we have created this step by step guide. You can just follow that. Here's Vitality SIP trunk. Here's you get to the web GUI. Here's what you put your credentials. Here's how you configure it. If you are using in a proxy mode, if you're using in a peer to peer mode, if you're using as a as a as a extension mode, these are the things that you can, you can pick, and it's very easy to follow. Applications. Again, this is where I spend more time on applications because uh, this is something that people uh, and the system integrators are always surprised. And um, hopefully, I think my the crowd here is is well very experienced on this. But I have come. A uh, number of occasions uh, where it says, "How do I do this?" My my customer has this Nortel uh, PBX, uh, you know, I, PRI lines, and they want to get off. They're paying about nine hundred dollars a month, and uh, how do I how do I get them off? And by adding this little piece of gateway here and getting calling folks at Vitality, get the SIP trunk coming in, the PRI coming out to the PBX, and nothing has to be changed. If the customer is not ready to move to a new IPPBX, this is just fine. If everything is working, you're retaining existing infrastructure and terminals, and the, the, the ISDN terminals can play place called directly over the WAN network, and they're compatible to all these legacy PBXs. The other option is looking at the IPPBX. There are some IPPBX that customer has a license, uh, there's a contract, they just can't get out of it. And they say, well, I'm, I'm, my PBX has seen as better days, I'm gonna switch to a new PBX, but I can't get out of my contract. Can you help us do that? Well, you can actually plug in uh, a PRI, between a PRI and a SIP trunk, you can plug in this gateway. And now you have a SIP trunk benefits, as well as you have a, one additional PRI. There are times where you're, for example, you're dealing with uh, an IVR system that only outputs in legacy IVR system that only outputs in PRI. You have this IPPBX. 
uh, that that is working fine, and you want to kind of bridge them together. Well, this is where you can use, again use the same gateway to do so. And that is correct, Oscar. Uh, so the question is, if the existing PBX just needs an additional T1 even port, add a VoIP I feature, you can do use use this gateway to do so. We do multiple times, and there are, there are number of times that we, I have seen the companies like uh, there's a product like Allworks, for example, that say is a smaller product that doesn't have PRI ports. So this kind of works uh, adds those PRI ports and a SIP trunk uh, ability to it. There's also models from Panasonic that do, do the same thing. Um, so multiple multiple usage for this. There also there are times that you just want to add one more PRI. To an existing infrastructure, there might be a, a the, the the product or uh, PBX comes with two PRI and you need uh, three or you need four. Well, you can add a couple of these, and that's you can very inexpensive way of doing that. So, again, the same. Now we go into the other applications, which is peer to peer calling. Uh, similarly, as we did with uh, VFX and VFX TH, you can do a voice over IP without even using a SIP. Uh, proxy server. You have the digest. You can have a 500 direct dial access codes on both sides. You, these products have a dynamic DNS support. There's no need for even static IP. Uh, you can enable small home office and SM, uh, SMEs to interconnect multiple sites without having to in, uh, invest into that. Now, I think someone's uh, mute just went off. So... Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, uh, by the way, one of the questions was that uh, do we support common ISDN variants? Yes, they do. And we can actually go uh, to our website and there's a list of all the different ISDN variants that we support on the on our uh, on our website on this particular product. Uh, virtual tongue accessibility is a similar thing because you, you can you can look as you can see in the graphics here, uh, having a VTAP. Uh, installed at multiple sites of branch office A or branch office B using the Vitality SIP trunk. You are connecting and even uh, connecting to an IP PBX at a third location. I think that's uh, one of the questions that I think uh, uh, Scott or Vitality folk, uh, salesperson can answer uh, after the presentation. The question was that, uh, you know, does the customer need a vitality peer-to-peer -peer service to make peer-to-peer -peer calls. Uh, virtual trunk accessibility, uh, you know, con connecting multiple branch. Uh, we talked about that, uh, and uh, I will skip this slide because I know it's a, it's a sort of a repeat of what we just talked about. Uh, the, the routing over IP again, it's a similar concept to extend the ISD and DDI service or IP from one location to the other. And you can actually re receive those DDI calls directly on the remote branch extensions. So key features, again, we talked, I mean, we are talking about these key features, but you know, again, I wanted to kind of dig a little bit deeper so that we can give you a full uh, overview of the product. And uh, so some of the things is allowed and denied lists. So we can actually allow or deny specific numbers from being dialed. There could be up to 24 lists programmed, and each list can have up to 64 entries. And I'm sorry, but the question that just came up here was that uh, uh, sort of rolled off, so maybe we'll come back to it. Um, th there are separate lists you can maintain for SIP and, I, and, I, and a PRI on a VTAP and same, same thing can be done for the VFX. So I kind of, first few uh, features that we talked about it, I'm sort of, sort of kind of making a distinction between a VTAP, which is a PRI uh, gateway and the VFX stage, which is the PSTN gateway. But all these features are supported by all of our gateways, okay? Uh, one of the things is automatic number translation. So match the numbering plan of the destination network. So that's again also supported through both of our gateways. 
and that actually is very uh, as a good feature because that it, it uses a lot of work for, on 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 all sides in configuration. The CDR, so the monitoring and keeping the records for incoming and outgoing calls. You can do use it. Uh, you can use various different filters like call durations, call numbering types, the type of ports, number of port, or port number, I should say, and any sort of call analysis that you want to do. So, you know, this is kind of uh, kept with the calling centers in mind, but also I'm, I'm sure that this could be used on SMB uh, or, or even at any so enterprise level uh, call analysis of, you know, needs. And they can be, could be where the calls are terminated and originated from. Uh, from a port, a uh, type of ports, to SIP ports, or with or without pin authentication number, and things of that nature. And we can have a record of up to 2,000 calls. And you have a backup option also on a CSV or text format, so you can actually keep uh, uh, dumping this data and keeping an ongoing record. And we... Go ahead. Uh, there's a any questions on the? Uh, uh, I think I only saw the classification or the clarification required. So direct dialing, routing. We talked about that. It's a route incoming calls on a SIP or PRI on a specific extension, and as well as extend the basic DDI routing capability to avoid uh, basically an operator intervention. Right. This can be done through the user. And it, it's 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 very useful, especially if your PBX doesn't have DDI functionality. Digest authentication, obviously, it's an industry standard for web, web authentication for incoming calls on a SIP port, especially in a peer-to-peer -peer network. So, if you want to use allow or restrict calls between users or group of users, uh, a lot of times you know you don't want call centers calling you out only be, because it's inbound call center or similarly, you know receive calls because only outbound call center. Uh, automated authentication mechanism, so you, there's no need to manually enter password each time. Uh, you could actually uh, design it and uh, configure it in such a way. And again, as we mentioned, there's about 500 different entries you can do in, on this table. Yeah, so we will be emailing the records. You know, I, I can't Say that we, um, how, but uh, you will you'll be able to do so. Factor IP is another uh, feature. Uh, we support both T.38 as well as pass through. Uh, we we do extensive amount of testing with that, so we make sure that we are supporting this. There's no need for analog uh, uh, lines in here. Uh, similar to our RCOC, which is a return call to original caller. Now, these are all PBX functions, as you can see, but uh, gateways have this capability. The product, uh, security-wise, the product is in, uh, supports SRTP and TLS. And you can always uh, actually, uh, since this is product is connected uh, directly to the SIP trunk, uh, so the SIP trunk provider also have their own uh, methodology to provide the security so to prevent abuse of the SIP trunks. And Vital certainly does that. And you can also, uh, you, there are also inline firewall uh, uh, that you, very inexpensive devices that are also available. But we, uh, the Gateway itself has SRTP and TLS implemented on there. Uh, real time clock, uh, it's basically, you know, flexibility to choose. You can obviously manually set the clock or SNTP server can be also configured so the gateway is always in sync. And I will show you uh, one or two of the, those configurations. Uh, Syslog, uh, so that you can have an easier, faster troubleshooting. You can the, better system integration uh, and system management. Uh, and uh, sending and debugging messages on the IP network, obviously, that's the use for it. But you can also do, do the, uh, use the UDP as a transfer protocol for any debugging processes. The feature list, I mean, again, in general, uh, somebody asked, is this actually a PBX? Well, it can support this call waiting, call hold, call transfer, the forwarding, pickup, conference features. 
now in a limited fashion on the conference side specifically but uh you know it it ha it does have a, a, a you know pbx functionality built into it uh in addition to that obviously things like digest authentication the hotline the pcap tracing for the troubleshooting the message mwi which is also important when you are just dealing with a sip trunk and then you have a sip trunk uh coming into this gateway and then all only thing is the analog stations plugged into these gateways so the message waiting indication is that available so this uh, gateway gateways also support that and uh, security concerns somebody asked a question so we do support srtp over sip uh so that and and other feature that we we have is a vlan tagging so we can support multiple vlans on, on our devices um, and again we talked about the other things like allowed and denied number list or ant which is the automatic number translations auto provisioning for mass deployments detail records uh, CLR based call routing, uh, digest, digest authentication, and dynamic DNS. Now, this is the moment uh, we've been waiting for, I guess, uh, in essence. Uh, uh, the, during this presentation, Vitality has offered uh, a special pricing. Um, so, and while, while everyone is digesting this attractive pricing for this, there's like one question that is just set to support two line analog phones. Uh, so there will be actually uh, two different uh, ports it will take on the uh, on the gateway itself. So yes, in essence, yes, we can support that. But you know, you give me a uh, shoot me an email uh, and give me a specific model or or a specific configuration, and we would make sure that uh, typically we don't come across a lot of these things. So um, we will do that. Oscar has a request that it's great pricing. And he's requesting Vitality to make it permanent. All right, uh, I'll let you deal, uh, Scott, deal with that. <laughs> um, uh, again, I think uh, this needs no introduction unless, uh, Scott, do you want to add something to it, Sharla? Uh, just that we would like you guys to take advantage of this uh, as quickly as possible. As you see, the discounted pricing is only available until the end of the month. so. I encourage you to contact your sales rep or account manager and get this ordered today. Excellent, excellent. So that actually, uh, I did the super fast version of my presentation that probably a normal day lasts about an hour and a half. Uh, but definitely, um, we wanted to give you this, you know, I, I call this 10,000 feet overview of gateway product lines. There's an opportunity, uh, and I, I definitely would like this opportunity if, if to give you more detailed, uh, you know, introduction uh, or training on on this uh, products. Uh, we can make sure we can actually reserve time, um, uh, give you more in depth uh, look of all the feature sets. We can actually do a live uh, sort of a, like a webinar like that, and then configure product here and there. Uh, to show you how features are configured um, and uh, obviously you know you, you will have this vital zip trunk with our gateways and we'll get an opportunity to support you at your site and uh, help you configure the, those devices uh, next I yes it does work behind that uh, thanks for that question uh, Rob that's a good good question um, I wanted to run through a take of few minutes and just kind of show you um, what the how easy it is to configure a gateway I'm kind of put together some screenshots that uh, matrix and white only folks have put together I can't take any credit for it um, but so if you configure a gateway and I hope can everybody see the like a screen this is the VFX TH um, so first and foremost, you know, when you, uh, there, the couple of steps I skipped, but you know, for example, region, right? So you'll set the region if there was a different region. Um, you set the network, um, then, then then comes down to the SIP, for, uh, SIP trunk part of that. So we are enabling the SIP trunk here and you're putting it as your SIP trunk ID, authentication, password. Uh, you're using is in a, a SIP trunk mode, which is in proxy. Uh, and your uh, registration is enabled and uh, you have uh, uh let's see if i can see this a little bit bigger 
Okay, and registration timer is all set, but you know you're checking in after and getting this registered, right? Uh, you have a registration server address that you put. The next step would be to choose the Kodak. Again, you are still in the SIP. If you can see it on the on the upper right hand corner, this is the SIP trunk under the basic settings. So you are changing, and now you are you you the first slide, and I'm going to go back here. You did the registrar settings. The next step, you're doing the you're picking the Kodak. Uh, you're supporting all these Kodaks. Um, and then the next thing we're doing here, obviously, every time you make a change, you got to you, you submit. Uh, click on the submit so that the uh, settings are saved. Um, the next thing we do is um, is the third step here, and that is your handling of the outgoing call. In this particular instance, let's just say, choose the block calls to the SIP trunk. Uh, next, and I'll show you why. Next, uh, the next step would be on there is we checking advanced functionality. Still, we are in the SIP trunk side of things. We are choosing the transport. We're choosing the digest authentication, which is to apply. Uh, we are either choosing, depending on your NAT is disabled or enabled, so that kind of answers your questions. Uh, this particular instance, we have disabled it, but you can actually choose any of those and uh, and enable it and and put uh, further uh, settings. So the fax protocol is a pass through on this one, and now the, this is the outbound calls. Okay. So next, uh, again, we're going back to registrar sharing. This is a SIP trunk number two we're configuring. This is the one again. We're putting the, all the registration information, the authentications, the the server address. This time we are, uh, we are putting this. Uh, we are not doing the registration enabled here. We're going through the the ports. And next slide after that, again we're choosing the Kodak. I'm skipping that. And then this time we are routing calls to SIP trunk without registration. The reason we did that, you know, if you saw the couple of screens before. Is where we chose not to uh, not un un uncheck the that box. Now we're going to the next slide. This is your again SIP trunk. This is an advanced uh, advanced options. You're using the the digital authentication and applicable. You cho you can choose any of the other settings as you as you as you as you need. The next slide after that, the way we configure the FXS port of a gateway, handling the outgoing calls, and then you're choosing your SIP trunk, and then this is SIP trunk number two. You're choosing your routings, and you're closing the SIP trunk to two ascending. And that's pretty much it. So, as you can see, it's a very fairly easy way to configure the product. If I can do it, anybody can. <laughs> so that's again we are introducing these products on this uh, wonderful pricing on these five different models. There are other op uh, other promotions may be available. So you can check with your uh, uh, salesperson in Vitality and they'll be more than happy to do so.